ready to unpack one of the funnest games I've played in a long time. You want to fight before we start doing this or what? Yeah, we can fight. <laughs> <laughs> we can fight. I'm ready. I'm ready. Rare ports always have like such fucking. I'm expecting it to be 2v1. <laughs> Welcome back to Lazy Susan Gaming. That's CK Player One. That's Evil Space Bunny. And I'm the Real Ports. This is a discussion style podcast where we kind of go through a book clubby thing. We pick a game at the end of every episode. And that next episode is going to feature that game. This week's uh, game is Signalis. Signalis. And I have so much to say about this game. I'm so fucking excited. But. Uh, for those that have not played it and are getting ahead, uh, this is a classic style horror game with elements of like uh, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and it's placed in this dystopian future where you're basically trying to survive this cosmic horror that has taken over this facility in order to fulfill a promise to somebody that you're trying to find. And uh, it is such a fucked game. But goddamn, was it good? I, I mean, I think <laughs> that's my take. But I want to hear, I want to hear from you guys first, and then I can divulge my tinfoil hat. I'll rip the bandaid off for the the listeners now, which is I did not actually finish the game. <laughs> I was uh, wondering, even if though you we would. had so much time to do it, uh, I chickened out basically. The okay. so the, right. there's multiple endings. Mm -hmm. and I, I want to lay this before the council of Lazy Susan Gaming. I got to the fake-out ending. You got one ending. Did I beat oh, the game, kind of? Did kind I of. sort of finish kind the game of. in a portsy kind of way? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was... Not much conviction here, but okay, I'll take it. Remember... I'm going to write it down for my game of the year list. <laughs> Remember how I said I beat Nier Automata and you're like, no, you have to get the other endings. You have to get the other endings. And I was like, is that coming back to haunt me? Fine. No, no. Fine. I definitely know this was a rougher game for you because it's definitely not your style. So you gave it a good, you gave it the college try and I can, yeah. I can tip my hat to you for that. Not only is it not my style, it's completely against what I like. And what I don't like is Resident Evil 1. So uh, <laughs> That's the game, only game you don't like. I think took yeah, it's pretty much. I mean, that and Dark Souls. <laughs> it's the only thing. I mean, I don't like. I, I don't really like the fixed camera stuff. It it bothered me less in this game because, um, the it doesn't do the th the transitional um yeah. fixed camera mm -hmm. thing where you're walking a separate direction than you were before because the yeah. camera switches. It doesn't do that. It's fixed in one position the whole time, and so that didn't bother me as much. But I don't. I still don't like the the way the game controls and the, the aiming and all that stuff. And controls, in this yeah. one, I don't, I don't think resident evil ones like this, where you have to like sort of aim longer to get a more accurate or damaging shot. No, Is but resident I evil one like, like that? that. It's not right. No, it's not. I like yeah. that a lot though. Uh, yeah. I, thought that was I guess nice it's touch. good. The options there, but your shots are worthless unless you do that. I felt, I mean, they are, there is several times <laughs> I, I, there is a, a, a uh, I don't think it was even technically a boss fight, but there was a boss character in a room with a bunch of other enemies. Oh my like closer, God. Oh, uh, it's closer to the end. I think and I immediately know what you're talking about. I ran. Huh? You ran. <laughs> I was like, deuces, bitches. I got what I, I like, needed. Stuff in this room that I need and I'm killing everybody. I like, I, I think on my second try killed everything in the room. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I feel like I could have done that with less ammo. So I did it three more times. What? <laughs> Holy so, shit, dude! I was so low on ammo. I was like, I have to be able to do that. I, I was like, I feel like I did it wrong. So I like, I redid it. I fucked it up a couple times, and then finally the third time, and I barely used less ammo. I was like, no, everything just eats bullets yeah. in this game. And like, there were times I would go to shoot stuff, and I would just see my shots go right past them. Or like, there's a point. So there's a mechanic that gets introduced later where, um, like, you shoot enemies. And you think they die, but then they come back to life later because they're like evil crimson head zombies in Resident because Evil. Because they love movie. Resident Evil. They love it. Yes. <laughs> and so you get a thermite 
sticks, which you can use to permanently kill certain enemies. And then later you get like a flare gun that shoots thermite out of it. And I was like, oh, this is great. And I go into that fight. And the first thing I do is try and shoot the biggest enemy with the thermite. And it goes like right past them. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the only shot I had. And so then I quit and I did it again. I was so pissed. <laughs> uh, I think I had a similar experience in this fuck room uh, where I was <laughs> like, yeah, I got the flare gun finally. And I went in there and I had the, you get uh, explosive ammo for it. You could literally shoot a grenade with this fucking flare gun. I was like, oh, wait, oh, that's what you use right. the grenades in? Yes. I also didn't know this until <laughs> I watched the last two hours somebody else playing. If you, I if did you, not know that. You have to read it. It, it, yeah. it. Yeah, it said it in the thing, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And I was like, okay. So I went in that room, and I'm like, Ka-dunk, and then nothing <laughs> happens. And I was like, reloading as quickly as possible. And I'm like, Ka-dunk, and I'm like, fuck this room. And so I just ran. I just kited those little bitches around in circles, and then I grabbed everything I needed, and then I ran. I like it's towards the end of the game. I just started running, and I was just like, "Yeah." I was like, "I, I tried this. to do that ever since the what ending is that? Is that ending the A or whatever ending? the fuck you would call it? Yeah, yeah the false ending. Um, after that, the game gets fucky, real yes. fucky. Yes, and uh, I tried to run through, and I just died a ton of times, and that's that's what I gave up. I was like, <laughs> I don't have the ammo to deal with all these fucking yeah. enemies. Like, yeah, I what, yeah. What difficulty did you all play it on? Just normal. I didn't know there was no There was no there, there, honest, I don't but... think there was. There was. What? Because, because I could have yeah. lowered it? <laughs> Cuz I was playing it on normal and then like we were supposed to record like what 2 weeks ago and then like mm -hmm. none of our schedules worked out and like I was scrambling to finish the end of the game cuz I kept thinking I was close to the end and I was not close to the end. <laughs> and so I finally got to a point and I was just like, "Oh my god, I just got to finish this thing so we can like talk or whatever." Yeah. And so I dumped it down to an easier difficulty. They I don't know there offer it easy... to you. Yeah. Yeah, they don't so offer it to you in the normal beginning of default? the game, I don't think. Yes, it's I think just so. Yeah, it's just in the menu. Fuck. Okay. Well, yeah. That's good to know. So normal, sweet. I guess, is what everyone played on. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think so. Uh, Until I got close to the end, and then I put it on easy <laughs> to try and get through the rest of it. My easy was watching Co Carnage just play through. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Honestly, uh, that is fair. Um, I fucking love this game. Um, I, I there were some spoilers for me at the beginning when the 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 king in yellow popped up, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're gonna go down this route. And there's going to be a Lovecraftian element to it. And with the cosmic horrors and stuff like that. And like the dream state that's happening and everything. Uh, it kind of started to make sense. And, uh, but yeah, no. Um, there was a lot of references in this game that kind of surprised me. Uh, besides the spoiler that I posted on my Twitter with the shining carpet. Because I feel like every fucking horror video game I play nowadays, they're <laughs> shining Let's Carpet. see, 12 minutes, there's yep. this game. Uh, what's the other one? There was you some played one, game definitely, that, I... that you talked to me about. I can't remember what it was, though. I can't remember. There's been so many. There was one recently that it was the wallpaper, and I'm like, you son it's of a so bitch. It's so funny. No matter how many times I see that, because I we watched The Shining for the first time like two years ago. Yeah. And... Every time I see the carpet now, like in this game, I was like, oh, that's close, but it's not. And then we look at a picture and I was like, no, it's exactly. It's, exact it's same, not even. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blatant there's, rip off. There's a lot of indie horror games that use that. And I'm like, okay, tell me that you've seen any other horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many others you could pick what else, from. Other what other like carpets are famous though, you I know? Mean, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's kind of a nice homage. Like I noticed. So this is some of the things that I wrote down. Uh, before we jump into how you feel about it, CK. But I want to just throw this out there. So this is these are the few references that I noticed. Alan Wake with the tapes, watching the tapes and stuff like that, and then having it like repeat stuff, go through stuff, kind of like you do in Alan Wake. Silent Hill with the music happening when the entities just start popping up and they start fucking with you. And the louder they, the closer they are, the louder it gets. Uh, is something that's from Silent Hill. Uh, on one of the cards, there's a reference to Aperture Labs, which I thought was cute. Uh, oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. I missed that. That's yeah, cool. it's on. It's only on one card. And I was like, mm. Aperture Science. Do you have to like spin it around to find it? or? No, it's just It's just, it's just the on card. the front of it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was, is it, is it like it. one of the key cards? Yes, one of the key cards is called oh. Aperture, the Aperture card. Okay. I was like, awesome. yeah, okay. Uh, and then, of course, Aeon. 
uh, which is what these these uh, the the beans are the 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 cyborgs. I don't know what you would call them, but they're just called Aeon units, like from Aeon Flux. Mm-hmm. So I was just oh. like, okay, okay, I could get into this. And obviously, the references to the Lovecraftian stuff with like King and Yellow, and then the the two other books that it references at the uh, end of the game, the fest the festival and uh, the inhabitants of Carcosa. So I've never read the inhabitants of Carcosa, but now I'm going to have to after this. But <laughs> uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. What did you think, CK? I had a great time with it. I'm a big fan of a game that does not hold your hand through yes. it. There is no tutorial. They drop you in and you just got to start trying shit. Like when I played the opening, you're in, I think it's, I can't remember if it's the first area you're in, but you like come out of your little capsule or whatever, and you have to figure out how to get out of the room. Yeah. And I'm like wandering around and I'm just like, what am I looking for? I couldn't interact with anything. I mean, I wandered around that teeny tiny room for like a solid five minutes before I was like, oh, I can go behind the capsule. Okay. (laughs) And then I figured out how to get out. And then I was like, okay, this is, I'm on some sort of abandoned ship. And I, so, you know, it's very much like, um, there's definitely no handholding. And personally, I like that. A lot of people don't like that. Um, I have always said uh, a well-made video game will teach you how to play it. And by that, I don't mean like with a tutorial. Um, the way the puzzles are formatted, the way, the way they're presented, the way rooms are laid out, the way you interact with enemies, they do a really good job of that in this game. Um, I struggled with one of the first <laughs> puzzles <laughs> for quite a while. Like I was editing my footage and I had to cut like, I swear to God, 20 minutes down from like the first, uh, like the lock picking puzzle where you yeah. had like the little, what is it? The sonar or whatever. I was so fucking dumb with that too. And I was just like, I'm like, what is, what is this? What is this? I had to watch it. Yeah. T- I had to watch something and I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. And, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, once you figure it out, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but like, once I got it, I was like, okay, so these are the, this is the style, the theme, the like, not necessarily like level of difficulty, but the the way they're presenting puzzles to you. You have to infer a lot. Mm. And so after I got past that, I was like, okay. And I didn't have It's also as not much immediately trouble. clear. They do a good job of having more shit there than you can interact yeah. with typically. Yes. So yeah. it's like it looks more complicated or like you could fuck something up and have it be a problem, but it's yeah. You can yeah. I think all all the puzzles you can mess with endlessly and it's you're not gonna screw yourself out of it. I was worried no. about that for a little bit. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can soft lock yourself in this game unless you just don't pick up the guns. <laughs> Although even then, I think you could probably still just run around. But I don't know how you do a cup like there's. I think only like what, two actual boss fights? Yeah. Right. I believe so. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Two? Man, yeah. I was so happy when I f- fought that first boss because it was it's deep in the game. And then I was like, oh, it, it, the game must be over. <laughs> <laughs> It is a while before you get to. And it took me three tries. I was like, "Hey, pretty fucking good for somebody who's not really into this combat." (laughs) Proud of you. But yeah, you kind of have to learn the combat style. Like, you have to press aim longer to get better shots. Um, It is not a game. The confirming kills thing uh, Mm -hmm. really gave me some trouble. I felt like I, I don't. Maybe I was just button mashing too much, but I swore it was like y on the controller instead of one of the shoulder buttons and so i was trying that for so long probably i don't know how many minutes but like several attempts where i just like let myself die because i took too much damage trying to make it happen yeah Mm. uh and then i finally looked it up and i was like oh what (laughs) (laughs) i I must have just like fat fingered the shoulder button once and uh like uh, gaslit myself and (laughs) not knowing the controls uh, are, are you talking about like when you stomp them yeah. basically? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to make yeah. sure that they're dead, except yeah. they're not always dead. Nope. They're not yeah. really dead, but they'll sleep for a while. <laughs> they will take a nice little nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're dreaming. It's okay. They'll be back. More fucked than before. God. So the first Did you guys time... burn a lot of bodies? Yes. Yeah. If yeah. I kill things, I, I try to burn always, them. It's kind of like saving health potions in a JRPG. I, I, I like the idea of doing it, but I'm never really gonna do it so I, I it was like hit or miss it's like this hallway annoys me a lot i'm gonna get rid of them there yeah. and then other mm-hmm. places i just left things alone 
Yeah, I burned as as much as I felt comfortable with, because like once I figured figured out like in certain boss fights where you have extra enemies that pop up, having the thermite is really handy. Oh. <laughs> and um, uh, because like the first boss fight you fight like um the one big, of the miners. Yeah, the big beefy ones. Yeah, the fluffy and ones. So I was like, okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this. And then more enemies pop out of the floor. And I was like, what the fuck? And uh, <laughs> then I got very stressed out. And yeah. uh, I think I died or I quit. I don't remember what happened. Uh, <laughs> You're like, fuck. <laughs> I was just like, nope, I hate this. Um, I think I, I think I died. I think I ran out of ammo and oh, okay. then I got killed. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm going back into this with the thermite. And I'm burning those little fuckers like as soon as I can. Yeah, it was very satisfying. Yeah, fuck those bitches. Fuck them. Honestly. Um, I was going to ask you guys something. I forget what it was. Um, yes. I have, yes. I have so many fucking things. Yeah, go, 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 go. Okay, okay. So, you're ready to put on your tinfoil hats, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Absolutely. So, what do you think? Is can, can you actually, before we get to the crazy shit, can you, just, uh, can you tell me what the fuck happened in this game? Space lesbians. <laughs> oh. That's Space actually the DLC. With knowledge. hooves, though. With hooves, yeah. They don't have feet. And that's no feet. something that's never I been I didn't confirmed. notice that until, like, five hours into the game. <laughs> yeah, they have little hooves. They're like... Okay, so yeah. this is my understanding of Signalis. Uh, yes. You are Elster or Elster. Uh, you're this uh, robot ro robotic unit. Actually, can I give my... Uh, oh, yeah, what I, I wrote down yes, first, and then, yes. Okay, so what I wrote down is uh, Germany lesbians. and Japan took over everything, flew to another multiverse, and then started some space boarding schools and labor camps. Yes. Is that close? Yeah, that's a good yeah. start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this has been so. Like, if you look at any of the, uh, so this is like a parallel universe, supposedly. I think. Because if you look at the, the representation of the planets and stuff like that, it's nine. So there's nine, nine planets, yes. Oh, okay. And some of the colonies are on moons, which uh, correspond to certain planets. And some of these moons, we've even theorized, you can sustain life on. Or you can sustain life in certain parts. Like in, Elon. <laughs> like, one of, the, one of the ones is, well... Like, people talk about the oceans and stuff like that. The ocean planet, the blue planet. It's obviously Earth, which has been destroyed by fucking everything, and the, the tides have risen to cover majority. And so it's just an ocean planet, basically, at this point. Uh, there's one part where they talk about the floating cities of a certain planet and uh, how they're able to sustain life in only the sky, but not the ground, because it's uninhabitable to do that. And it's easier to have these floating cities. And there's a theory about Venus. If we ever try to colonize Venus, we would have to live in the clouds of Venus because that's sustainable life that's for lovely. us. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And, 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 and it, there's all this stuff, and we can really divulge into that. But the thing I really want to talk about is the story and the parallels that are happening in this dream slash reality world so um i'm just gonna kind of dive into the madness that is <laughs> the space lesbian okay. robots uh -huh. <laughs> i i love this game uh i'm probably gonna play it again and uh uh really deep into it oh also one of my favorite things that i wrote down was uh we're never gonna dance again she's never gonna dance with us again which is something folk says yeah. uh to adler Aww. about you <laughs> which i was like oh careless whisper of a good friend <laughs> um but anyway so uh you're elster who uh is trying to find somebody right you have this picture of a girl and uh it's not even the girl that you're chasing uh it's a girl from i think the person that they used to imprint to make the elster unit uh, is girl and you obviously see ghosts of her throughout Just, she's asking you did you find who you're looking for because that's obviously her but it's it, you're obviously like no i'm not looking for you i'm looking for somebody else i'm looking wait for that is yeah i'm pretty sure that's her i think so oh that shit i did not impression. put that together at all that holy she's shit a, she's a ghost of your figment imagination oh damn okay and and stuff while you're trying to find uh arena you're, and, so you're talking about 
Uh, is it Isa? Issa? Uh, I think her name is uh, Issa or something like that. And your character, uh, Elster, is based off of Lilith from my readings and understanding throughout the story because they talk about Lilith and her friend, friend that survived this huge invasion and they led this great unit to victory and stuff like that. And so y Lilith was chosen to be uh, the imprint for the Esther unit. And it's funny because she, lo she when you come back, she's missing an eye and yeah. then eventually Elster loses an eye towards the end of the game. Yeah. And so it's kind of interesting to see that imprint. Huh. Um, but you're Elster. You've been sent on this mission on the Penrose with Ariana, right? And those are to find sustainable planets way the fuck out there. Basically and, just a one-way mission. Yeah, a one-way mission. And if you were to find a place, you were supposed to send back mission and start to colonize and stuff. And um, obviously that doesn't happen. And you start, she, you find out later on this note that they, you get a thing from command saying, basically kill yourself or have the Elster unit do it for you because there's no returning and you're just gonna starve and suffer and die from eventually, you know, the elements of space and your, your machine's gonna start tearing down. And that's what does start happening. Like uh, the machine starts breaking down and stuff like that and uh, fucking everything up. And so to sustain life, Irene goes into the sleeping unit. She makes Esther make her a promise. And uh, I think what happens is because of the exposure to like the bio matter or bio residency, it caused cancer and like tumors and stuff like that. And since the robots are androids, they're not humans, but they're not also just pure robotic. Um, Esther eventually dies. But I think what happens is Arena, because she's trapped in this capsule creates like this dream reality and crashes the Penrose into this like another ultimate dimension and causes this whole chaos. And uh, what happens is she ends up creating this weird fucked up area in the mines and Falk finds it and sees this madness and creates this imprint or this imprint is created on her by uh, Ariana, because Ariana is like trying to get out, trying to get some kind of voice out because of the bioresidency and stuff like that. She has the ability to use that. And like I said, this is insane. But we've got our hats on. It's okay. We got our hats on. Folk, this is why folk, she, you find these messages about folk coming back and or folky, folky, folk. I don't know how to say her name, but it's F A L. K E. I was yeah. I was. Uh, I I went by Falk. I went by Falk too. I've yeah. heard Falky too, but uh, that sounds terrible. I know. <laughs> Even if that's right, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> and like Adler's talking in his. That's in like his... GIF versus GIF. I'm never calling right, it. Right, right. We're not calling it GIF. <laughs> I don't care what the creator says. But uh, in Adler's readings and stuff like that, you you hear him talking about how Falk has started showing these weird signs ever since coming back from the mines and stuff like that because she saw something and that's the doorway i think to the other dimension where the penrose is crashed and folk saw this but because she was exposed to this madness this insane fucked up thing that happened this tear in the universe she and the units because of the way that they work with each other because of the feedback loop. They talk about the ro radio and the feedback loop and stuff like that. They start all fucking experiencing this sickness and they're slowly being exposed to this madness and this sickness and this, this thing and stuff like that. And this is Ariana's like desperate way trying to get out of this pod and trying to get Esther back so she can fulfill her promise. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it gets... <laughs> There are parts of it I didn't think about in certain ways. Like, I thought, well, like, each of the different androids have different, like, thing. What, how did they say it? Uh, they each had different, like... Um, imprints from the... Not not the imprints, the... Laws, um, like the... Um, 
Oh, uh, I can't think of what it's called. Like how fetishes? Oh yeah. Oh wait, what? <laughs> like wait, maybe fetishes. I should finish this game. <laughs> well, I watched the end of it. I don't remember them talking about fetishes. I mean, so like in, in a fetishes in like um, not like a sexual thing, but like a uh, like almost like a comfort thing. Like the oh fixation. yeah, their fixations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. Okay. the Elster units were very social. They worked, I think, well in groups, but not necessarily alone, if I remember right. I thought they that worked be better right. alone, but I could Maybe be they worked better alone. Yeah. But they were definitely, I'm pretty sure they were the most social of the group, mm -hmm. or of the different ones. And then they all had different things, like certain groups of uh, the androids, they need to, like, bathe regularly to stay sane. Yeah. Or, um, or if the Elster units liked music and dancing, I believe. Because you had to play, there's a certain point where you have to play that music from the oh the magpie box, which the is magpie, the, which is yeah. the uh, signals, the signalis uh, theme and the intro and stuff like that. The magpie box, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was pretty interesting to see how much like deep lore they built into it's not just like these androids in also, general. It's interesting but, like, that everything's so technologically advanced, but those little quirks yeah. stayed and they couldn't get rid of them. Mm -hmm. well, I yeah, that was fun. I I like that because like I I it it made me think of Philip D, uh K Dick with uh uh Blade Runner and uh Android mm. sheep and stuff like that and like mm -hmm. how no matter like we build these robotics and stuff like that they still have these features and like these impressions and no matter how much they try to wipe their minds and stuff like that they still remembered things from their past or things they they had those special quirks about them that these robots you know they're they're units they're made to be used for work or different things or fighting and stuff they all had their tasks or mining and uh but they still had this impression and stuff and that's why i think like elster because her character what her her first impression lilith was a lesbian and had a lesbian relationship I think it made it easier for Elster to just fall in love with Ariana because Ariana started showing her affection and like needing somebody to talk to on their one way death trip. How rough. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite um, lines in the game is when you're down in the mines and they have those, um, what are those wires that would like hurt oh you so fucking, fucking bad? God. I hated those things. So there are these like, in the mining area, they make paths with like, it's not like chicken wire. It's like some sort of razor wire. Yeah. And you have to have your flashlight on to see it. Yes. That's so another that's, part where that's I like the laser reloaded. The maze that happens before the mines, I yes. think, right? I think so. Uh, There's definitely the one that made, well, this particular section is yeah. in the mines for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like you kind of weave your way through and then there is um, two, I think they're Elster units. Um, sitting on the ground one's dying and the other one's crying over her oh yeah and oh god i love that and she's like it's all right like don't worry it'll all be fine and she's like hey you want to hear something funny i remembered my name the other day <laughs> and she's like i'll tell you i'll whisper it to you it'll be our secret and i was just like oh my god yeah. <laughs> like, i and spam then, clicked and i was very disappointed they didn't say it out loud <laughs> I know. I did too. I was like, Am, can I eavesdrop on this conversation? I want to know what I names look like in this again. universe. <laughs> Everyone's a robot. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I love that. I thought that was just like a really cool, like for, for a bunch of like female androids on a space base, like they actually had so much personality and they were all written incredibly well. And they were very interesting. You ran into other ones that were just kind of like, off in a room somewhere and one's like i'm not coming out until this shit settles down yeah like, i'm, I'm saying out like deuces like, yeah she's like, she's like i'm not getting out here in the medical bay and i'll see you guys later yeah um <laughs> but yeah they, they were all so cool um did you guys have like a favorite moment from the game a favorite line or anything the like end. that the end <laughs> which ending which ending no when it was over <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> I don't, I'll have to think about that. Bonnie, go ahead. 
Uh, so I had a couple. Uh, when you're on the beach for the first time, you're on the beach planet, and you're walking through, and you're collecting all the, the little first notes. person thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say maybe the first person exploration segments. Those are so, so cool. So my theory behind the first person exploration segments is Elster is tapping into Lilith's memories, because at one point she sees uh other things or it's either it's either Lilith's or it's Ariana's because there's one point where you're on a subway train and you walk up and you see Ariana and she's looking at the Penrose um flyer you know because she, yeah and I think that was her inspiration to join up the army and and get into that because from everything it sounded like she was like an artsy fartsy weird kid and she just needed to get the fuck out of that area <laughs> first person section where you go find her at the school and yeah. those those girls were like picking on her <sighs> and i think like she i don't know she felt she had something to prove or just wanted to get the hell out of there and i think that's maybe why she was interested in um yeah just pin. you know getting the hell out <laughs> yeah i mean i don't really blame her like yeah. yeah the first person stuff was really good um i had i think i got the good ending uh, my first time through, I did go and watch all the other endings and stuff. Mm. And uh, I also kind of like Adler's weird simp relationship for Falk. Yeah, Adler <laughs> was a weirdo. Such a weirdo, dude. At one point when he's like, he's like, you see him for the last time and he's obviously succumbed to this like madness, radiation, whatever damage is happening to these units. That's causing them to go insane and repeat, which is why I think they're resurrecting themselves. They're repeating and being disassembled and reassembled in like a weird fucked up cancerous way. <laughs> like they're basically like Deadpool, but not in a funny way. <laughs> they're just a ball of cancer. <laughs> so the end, um, when, um, sorry, what's his name? You just said it. Adler. I, I can't remember. Adler. When Adler says... You can't, we can't keep doing we this, keep you know, don't go this. back or whatever. I didn't realize it was an intentional thing that they were resetting it. What's the motivation there? Do you know? To fulfill the promise. Oh, I see. So wait, the... wait, wait. That means that you're basically you're destroying time... everything just to make good with Ariana. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are in a fucking time <laughs> loop. Disgusting. Dude. Oh yeah, that's why. Uh, no wonder they said that the blurb thing that shows up is like you. Uh, what do they call it? Some sort of monster. Do you remember that? It, it, it's just one of the words that pops up in at the end. But um, oh, I don't uh, well, remember. I, maybe even all all the endings. I can't German. remember. But... Yeah. Well, it was English, but it was yeah. Oh, <clears throat> um. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah, they're like you monster, you heartless monster. Oh, you heartless like monster. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that was directed at not you. I think oh, that's really? directed at Ariana. So, oh, so well, either way, Arena, <laughs> Arena, Ariana. I don't know yeah. how to say Arena. I think is that not Ariana, but Arena, the main, the blind or the white hair girl, red eyes. She looks like a. Oh, rabbit. is that her name? Oh, yeah. yeah, she. I. She's the king in yellow. In my in my theory, she's oh. the king in yellow. I've never read she, that, so it doesn't so, mean. So yeah, me either. Name. Uh, in the play, there's multiple characters throughout the thing that are basically being played against each other um, for the fun of the king in yellow. There are these two main girls, and they're being played against each other. So Falk and Elster are being played against each other in oh. for, for the king in yellow. And the king in yellow demands absolute sacrifice. He demands absolute sacrifice and power over his subjects and so like all the people dying is a result of her being a bitch and wanting to get out so she could get her promise which elster promised to kill her she wants to die she she's been exposed to radiation and her life's been prolonged for god knows how long like if you look i think at one point one of the notes says like three thousand 3,000 whatever, and if you yeah. figure that out, that's 3,000 3, days. Periods, I think they call them? Yes, yeah. and that's 3,000 days. That's like, what, fucking 10 years? It's something ridiculous. She's been mm. in space on this death journey for God knows how long, and who knows when supplies started running out, when she started doing this, where she would go into the little pod to, like, sustain life and for a period of time, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think what that's is- directed at her. That that makes sense. That makes sense. What ending did you get when you played? Uh, besides the fake ending, I got memory. Which oh, you I, got memory. Which I think is the good ending. Uh, okay. Which, you know, you just sit there and you just, you're just like, I just want to sit here for some time before everything. There's also the promise ending where is that is Is that the one where you her. just go lay down? Yeah. Outside the ship? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That one's, that's, um... That's broken promise, I think, where you okay. just lay outside and you're just like yeah. in a ball. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, there's <laughs> no way that's going to end. Now, the other yeah. one, you go inside and you start talking to Arena and you're like, hey, I just I just want to sit down. <laughs> you, you can't believe the day I fucking had, dude. And like you kiss <laughs> her forehead and all this other stuff and you just sit there and I think you die and stuff. And she's just kind of sitting there in her yeah, pot and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in then, which one? Yeah. In memory? In memory, yeah. So I got the promise ending. Stuff. So you got the promise ending. So where you killed her? <laughs> I killed her. You're like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> well, well, that's like, that's got to be the good ending, right? <laughs> that's what I, I thought I had the good ending. Because you want to, like, that would end the, the, the cycle. Yeah. Right? yeah. The cycle is yeah. complete. Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, the thing I, the, the endings are, so there's four endings. There's you five. have memory. Wait, there's five. Are, are we including if the you, fake ending? Yeah, I include the fake ending. So there's. Okay. Court's <laughs> got one. Let's you include one. it. You got one. You got one, buddy. Do you guys want to hear about the ending I got? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, tell us all about the fake ending for Yeah, tell us. Tell us. Well, it kicks you back to the menu, and then you think the game's over, and it is. <laughs> <laughs> you lose your arms, and you sit there in a pool of blood, dying. <laughs> um, all right, so we have the fake ending, memory, uh, promise. Broken, broken promise. promise where you just sit outside the ship. You don't go in. And then what's the, la- the last so, one called Artifact? The last one is called Artifact. And I didn't yeah. even know this was a thing because I looked it up today. And I think you can only get it on a second playthrough. I think you can only get it on a second oh, playthrough. Maybe it, maybe the one I watched didn't even have that then. I'm going to have to go back. Yeah, I already started another playthrough, so I'm ready. Uh, I'm just running past everything. I don't give a fuck. And now yeah. that I know that it, there's an easy, I'm going to turn it down. I know. I was thinking yeah, about. Crank it, crank it down to get through. I was thinking down. about the beginning of the game when I got frustrated with this. I was like, I could have so much ammo right now if I just realized how easy it is to dodge things early on. Oh, yeah. yeah. It takes some practice to like learn how to dodge because they, yeah. they move so weird. Yeah. Like toward the end of the game, I, ju- I was finally like, fuck it. I'm not shooting anything. I'm just running through these areas. And I just kept taking damage. Now playing on easy, you can take more hits, which is yeah. kind of nice. That's I don't awesome. know that there's necessarily more ammo, but like you can take a lot more damage before you're like in danger or whatever. Um, but yeah. So uh, the, the interesting thing too, about the way you get the different endings is based on how you play the entire game. Yeah. I didn't so, realize this. <laughs> yeah. So like if you, I forget what the exact breakdown is. I think for, promise that ending the one that i got you take a long time to explore so my play time was about 12 hours mine was so you two take, okay so you take a long time to explore you deal a lot of damage and you play very aggressively okay um and then for memory i think you rely oh, was it that one where you rely more on maybe it's broken promise where you rely more on like stealth and you're not dealing a lot of damage and you use a lot of health items and then I forget what memory is. It's on the Wikipedia. I looked it up. <laughs> I did not read about the um, the artifact ending because I want to really get that one. I want to see what it is. Do you want me to explain the little bit I do know about that ending? I saw it. It looks very interesting. Uh, okay. And I'm kind of excited to actually figure out what the fuck is happening because none of it made any sense to me. I saw it and I was like, like what the what the f- what is that? What is that? that? Must- that must be why you can only get it on a second playthrough because, like, you have to experience, like, the. You have I guess, to do it again. Like, yeah, Adler you got to do everything again. And you have your knowledge and everything going into it a second time. Although, I'm really curious. So, basically, you need to get three keys that are hidden. Oh, okay. And I won't say any more than that. Uh, but I am really curious how you find said hidden keys. Um, oh. Because. Uh, one thing I noticed at the very end, when you go back into that little radio room yeah. where the King in Yellow book is at the very beginning and at the very end, right before you go to the end boss fight, um, there is a chest there with three locks on it. 
And I was like, I don't remember that in the beginning. And I remember looking at it and going, I feel like I should have something to open that. Like, that looks really <laughs> mysterious. I, I don't think I even remember this. Okay. It's behind you. So, like, you oh. like you go in and you have, like, the king in yellow and the computer and the like books just, and stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, it's behind you. And I turned around, like, I was just like, okay. Because the first time, like, at the beginning of the game, I walked in, I saw the book, I touched the book, and it's like, here's the game now. Yeah. So I didn't get to look around that room at all. Um, and so, uh, when I got there, the tour, uh, at the end of the game, I was like, I'm going to make sure I look around before I click on anything. And that's when I saw that. I, I think it's like a, a chest or a safe or something. Um, but I saw that and I was like, I feel like I should be able to open that, but I don't have anything to open that. <laughs> I can't interact <laughs> with it at all. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm guessing that's where you that's use probably it, yeah. the keys. That, that would but, make yeah. sense. I'll have to, yeah, I, I do want to finish it again uh, and stuff just because it's so weird. And just like Adler said, we can't keep doing this, but obviously I fucking can. But <laughs> watch me. Watch me with your fucking no skin bitch face over there. He wears no mask. Yeah, that's he, true. He, he not. does not wear a mask. <laughs> or a face. Or a face. Or a face. He has removed all menace from himself. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I kind of like how the game was left kind of ambiguous, uh, to where you kind of make up your own thing. I know I've spilled a lot of my guts about it, but I kind of, like, I did play, I did, my playthrough was about, like, 12 to 14 hours. And, yeah. uh, I fucked around a lot, and I looked around, and I tried things and stuff like that, and I read a lot of the stuff, because I just found this, this fucking insane world ran by japan and germany <laughs> just utterly insane uh f like convoluted madness and i was just obsessed i just became I, obsessed with i it. could tell that this was a game that people would like a lot and that there's a lot in it yeah for people willing to put in the effort yeah i'm glad to hear that's true but i could not get myself <laughs> i would find myself reading the notes and be like ah, i'm not gonna remember this when i close this because I, I just I, my investment wasn't there. You yeah, know? yeah, it's a fair. bummer, but what can you do? Um, can I run through a couple of gripes real quick? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, to explain my position a little bit, so no, six inventory slots stuff. is criminal. Yes, it was rough. Wait, say that again. Criminal. Six say inventory slots. Six inventory oh, slots. Yeah. When I was going through my footage, that's all the shit I was cutting out. Is every time I ran back to the inventory box or stared at the map for twenty yes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So there is a mod to increase it to eight, which is nice. That's much better. But I was on the Game Pass and could not implement the mod. Nope. Thanks, Xbox, you sons of bitches. <laughs> um, I thought I was telling Bunny about this. Uh, I thought my solution would be just make the things you equip not count in inventory uh, yeah, space anymore. Yeah, that would That'd be, be nice. so so easy, and it would still be a lot of inventory management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, that would, that would yeah. relieve at least three spots, like your flashlight. Whatever's on your or whatever you have, like the thermals or the the insta stun baton yeah. or and yeah. your gun, I would be. Well, it'd be would two because you can't do the flashlight and the stun oh, that's stuff true. at the same that's time. True. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but so, so that two. would be eight inventory. Maybe that's where they got the idea for the eight inventory oh, slots. Sense. Is like yeah. Um. So uh, the, 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 the radio room puzzles. I thought it was neat at first. But by the third time, I was like, I'm tired of this fucking noise and the word sturb. <laughs> sturb. Still. Hurry. I'm sick of it. I, I could not stand that puzzle by the time I was done. Like, I played Lost in Vivo. I'm no stranger to harsh sounds and visuals, but dear <laughs> God, the fucking sound it makes when you got the right signal was Awful. Oh, that high pitch, like dude, it drove yeah. our cats insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's where I got the feedback. Uh, so they talk about the feedback, uh, in like a couple documents and stuff like that, yeah. and radio feedback. So yeah. that's exactly what that is. Like, it's the, the awful. Can they just lower the volume them? by thirty thousand percent? Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honestly, fair. I would. I would just like turn on my headset and just turn it all the way down and just like go through the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could agree. 
Did you, when you guys were solving those puzzles, did you toggle the radio while you were in game or did you do it from the menu? I did it from the menu. I didn't, I didn't know you could do it in the game. Well, no, I didn't know until later. I didn't know until later. Yeah, I, I didn't know at all. Yeah, I would yeah. just go into the menu and like people would be like running towards me and I'm like, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> just going through the thing. Okay, it's over here now. <laughs> it's I'm much gonna die. easier. <laughs> it's much easier through the menu than trying to do it on the fly because yeah. like it goes faster like while you're in the game doing it oh but, that makes sense yeah the menu is just like it's way safer i was even trying to cheese it by running in and out of the room in one of the areas toward the end of the game because <laughs> i was like there's shit in here it's trying to kill me i hate this sound and it did not work that it way I, think it, I think it resets when you go in and out of the room yeah yeah it does yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> <laughs> bitches bitches <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty much it i mean i i didn't like the combat but i think that's a me thing so yeah. uh, i mean I it's, the, it's the... tricky yeah it's tricky it's a it's not it doesn't play like anything else i've played before um so it takes it takes a lot of getting used to like i wasn't i played on mouse and keyboard and it took me a it long looks time so to... much actually co carnage's playthrough was on mouse and keyboard it looks way better on mouse and keyboard. I played on yeah. controller because we were in bed on the big TV. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I wish I played on mouse and keyboard because yeah. it looked it lo the aiming looked easier. All of it looked better. Yeah, yeah I'm sure the aiming is a lot easier than yeah. with controller. Yeah, I think it was designed technically for mouse and keyboard, and then it just kind of works on a controller too. Yeah, but yeah. I I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the combat was kind of my gripe too uh that's why towards the end of the game i was just like kiting bitches and not giving a fuck <laughs> and even yeah. even you can fight folk uh without uh using any ammo because eventually she just falls down and like you could just be kiting them grab a get spear and then fucking yeet it at her you know you don't and... actually have to do damage nope <laughs> you don't holy shit yep uh, I ran out of ammo halfway through the fight and I was just like, um, am I just fucked? And I picked up a spear and just ran around and I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm just trying not to die. And then she fell and I was like, oh shit, I You're can just go like, now. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. just Running wore over herself out by flying around. Yeah. By the way, the design for that fight was so cool. That was I really cool. love that shit. Maybe that's my favorite thing. <laughs> I didn't even play that part. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think one of my another favorite thing in that about this is like the music. The music was really good, really beautiful. Obviously, I think I think my biggest uh, gripe about the graphics was it switching back and forth between the pixel art and the low poly. Personally, I preferred the low poly, even yeah. though the the pixel art was gorgeous. It was beautiful and like wonderful. Like, especially with the eye at the very beginning, it's great. You can make her like mm -hmm. do crazy things and stuff. But I think there was something about the low poly that I just grew very fond of. And so like the, they would have the cuts and it would just be kind of jarring for me. And then it would go back to the low poly and everything. And I was Dude, just everyone like, oh. thought low poly was going to age so poorly, but it's so fucking incorrect. It, it's it so aged incorrect. Like Beautiful. fucking silk, dude. It's so goddamn good. Yeah. I, I love the way the, the game looks. Yeah. yeah, for sure. The sound, I heard some other people say, uh, say the music was really good. I feel like it was mostly awful <laughs> to be, <honest. laughs> but I was listening to it on a big TV and we don't have the best speaker system for it. So I uh, think we mostly heard the annoying sounds yeah. and whatever music was underneath. I didn't really hear much. So I need to go back and like listen to that soundtrack. Um, yeah, go back and listen. It, I felt like uh, very Carpenter-esque, especially at the beginning and stuff. Like it, it reminded me of John Carpenter and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm fucking, I'm fucking ready for this game. And then it just took me on a wild, <laughs> it took me on this fucking wild ass <laughs> adventure. <laughs> They have like um like different themes. Yeah. Like obviously it plays like the scary music whenever an enemy is chasing you, but there are themes like really, really light themes for save rooms and the item box yeah. and the when save you're in noise safe can spaces. fuck off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I loved that. I think for me, the thing that sold me on the game was in the trailer, they have that low poly shot where she's trying to pull the hatch open oh, yeah. on the Pen Penrose. Yeah. And her arm gets ripped off and you see her like fly backwards and her arm's missing yeah. and like shit's falling out of her. Awesome. And like it's in the trailer. And I saw that and I was like, because normally I don't fuck with pixel games anymore. Yeah. Like it's not my favorite aesthetic. But uh, I saw that and I was like, 
okay, you have my attention. I love that. <laughs> I love that indie devs can use this easier way of presenting things, but do things that weren't possible back no. in like the PS1 and yeah. shit. It's so fucking rad. Yeah, it yeah. makes me happy that it's made like this huge resurgence over the last couple of years because I just, I love it. I don't know what it is, but it just instantly makes me feel cozy and warm. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm back into these there's games also, and stuff. There's also, there's like a creepiness to it, which is oh, why yeah. it works so well for the, the horror genre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that you can't convey if everything looked... Like, cause a lot, a lot of horror stuff is like uh, obscuring things is like the way to make things scary, right? You don't want to reveal all the information at once. Right. What's a better way to do that than just a couple of fucking blocky textures? <laughs> <laughs> fucking make it look like baby puke or something. I don't like, know. <laughs> look, walking around that that uh, was it the classroom in the first person? Oh yeah. View mm -hmm. was creepy as shit. Yeah. It yeah. was so dimly lit, and it, but it looked well, like. There's actually a mod that I kind of want to go try, even though I don't really like this game that much, uh, where you can either be in first or third, third person, person the whole game. Yeah, I yeah. saw that recently today. Oh. I saw the third person. I was like, person that's kind of feeling. Where it looks like dead space. And I was like, oh, that makes it feel way different and way that's scarier. Cool. Yeah, that, I think it would be scarier. It would be, be way fucking scarier. You wouldn't dude. be able to Shit's see shit behind around. you. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck. That would get me good. That would definitely get me good. I yeah. think for, for me, the scariest moment was the first time you come across an enemy. Because oh, yeah. I'm just like, I, I've, I, and they pace it so well. Like, I'm just trucking around like the beginning of the game. I was like, oh, I got the safe code. I need to go back into this room. <laughs> and I just, I and I'm like running finally. I run. And as soon as I hit the door, it's like, Rah! and like this thing comes up right next to the door. And I swear I shit my pants. Because it's so <laughs> sudden. It's so loud. And it was like right in front of my character. And I was like, whoop, like right into the room. And then um, that, and then I realized there's another moment too when I was at, looking at my footage earlier today. Uh, when you get into the uh, the lower mines and you start to see the flesh coming out oh, of yeah. all the different places. So you get down into that lower level. Uh, I think for the first time you crawl through a hole in the ground in like this museum kind of looking yeah. room. And you go through that end doorway, and there's just a flesh hole in the yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, in my footage, I walked in, saw that, turned around, and walked right back out. And I was like, nah, I don't, <laughs> I don't need anything to do with that. Uh, so uh, Fabian was watching me play this the entire time, which was, it, it helped me get through the amount that I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we were talking shit about it, and you know she would point out <laughs> things I didn't notice and stuff like that. She hated the game just as much as me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but the, it was fun to experience together. It's kind of like watching a you know movie a you're not movie, that yeah. into. It's it's yeah, better yeah. with other people, yeah. Uh, so I we <laughs> come up to that flesh hole, and I immediately go to jump down it, and she's like, "You're not gonna look around." <laughs> Well, that's your first fucking choice is to jump down the fucking flesh hole. Like, I don't know. That seems like the, the thing to do. <laughs> I'm a simple guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In my notes, I wrote mind pussy. Mind pussy. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, why? Why? And also Akira, because like, you know, I'm Akira. I'm just like, I'm like, is this? I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I'm like, is this hole made for me? I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, I'm like, it took me so long to figure out that I was supposed to jump down that fucking hole. And I was just like walking around. I was like completely lost. I had gotten everything else I fucking could. And then finally I walk over there and I'm like, you stupid hole. And then all of a sudden you see the thing that says down. And I'm like, cock. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped down. I think the scariest box. thing for me was looking on how long to beat uh, and seeing that I was four hours past everyone else's completion time. I think that's wrong. <laughs> uh, I, think people got to, I think people got to the false ending and they're like... I agree with you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a 100% sure that that yeah. is obscuring that number because yeah. 10 and a half hours, fuck off. Yeah, yeah, no. No, it was definitely way longer. <laughs> Although me at the... Uh, the false ending was 14 hours, so. <laughs> uh, we left it idle for some amount of time. I don't think it was yeah. two hours or four hours, but, you know. No worries. Yeah, I mean, shit happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and if you're not vibing with the game, like, you aren't going to drag yourself through, you know, another Oh, we three sat hours. there for quite some time going, <laughs> oh, I don't know. You gave it the good college try, then. For yeah, that, I'm very yeah. proud of you. I'm glad that I did. Yeah. I, yeah. I experienced a new thing, and. Uh, I hated it. I, I pulled some things away from it that I like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
actually go read some horror books, it sounds like. Because I, I think if I had a bigger attachment to the lore going on, like Bunny was like freaking out about this book and stuff, that would have carried me through. Like Hellblade, I was very fascinated by the psychological elements and all this stuff because I found that game aggravating to yeah. actually play. Mm. But there was enough pull for me to get through the game. and That piece was just missing for me in Signalis. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I mean, uh, Robert Chambers isn't for everyone. So, like, The King in Yellow is kind of a harder read. Uh, mm. Watch the play if you can, possibly, or an interpretation of the play would be good. Um, I haven't read the other book, but I have read The, the Festival, which is the H.P. Lovecraft book, and uh, The Inhabitants of Carcosa, which I've never even heard of until this. Um, oh. that was, so that was my, that was my takeaway. From this game to go check out and stuff. There was one other thing that drove me insane. It was actually the first thing, yeah. which when, there was this long hallway and there was a, a couple doors. And then I had explored the entire map to, up to this point that I could. And I was like, OK, I'm going to go back to that room because it looks like there's more stuff down there. And when I got there, it was revealed that there's a block in the hallway, like a like a bunch of furniture block in the path or something that didn't show up on my map because I ha you have to hug it. You have to, like, slam your face into it in order for it to be revealed on your map. Like, and I, I that drove me insane. If you're in the room, you can see that shit. Just put it on the fucking map. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> a couple times because I would walk up to a door, and that, but I wouldn't go through it, so it would show up on my map as a blue door. And so, like, I would just... There were a couple times I was just like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I spent so much time <laughs> yeah. in the beginning just, like, thoroughly exploring everything. And I was just like, I'm missing something. I don't know what I'm missing. And then I would go back through and it dawned on me finally, I was looking at the map and there would be blue doors, which in my head went, well, you've already been through that door, but then the room wouldn't be mapped out behind it. And then it took me a while to kind of catch on to the fact of like, oh wait, I didn't actually go through that door yet. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, then you get to a hallway with three more doors and you're like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. But like, you know. It's at that point that I started running around enemies, and I was like, fuck you guys. I'm just trying to play the story now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just in it for the space lesbians. It's fine. Bye. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> fine, bye. Yeah, uh, my roommate, Phil, uh, is obsessed with this game, too, and so me and him reminisced, and he's like, so... Like as soon as I beat it, I was like, I was like in this like fucking like post shock video game, like adrenaline beating a game where you're just kind of like, I'll never experience this again. Sadness, <laughs> and uh, he's all like, "How was space lesbians?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> I was like really sad and stuff. Yeah, he thinks you get he, sad when you beat games. Sometimes that you really yeah. like. Yeah. 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 I guess that's true. I do too. Yeah. That's why I haven't beat Half Life Alex yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Shit. want it to end. I cried. I, I cried at the end of Alex. So yeah. I was like, I mean, it was just. Is that so... the VR one? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Okay. Uh, Alex was it's different. Really it wasn't... fucking good. It's really fucking good. And I think I was just overwhelmed because, like, it's Half Life and, like, it changes everything. And you're just like, I was just overwhelmed and stuff like that. And sometimes I get that way with video games. I think. There's something about beating a video game that you'll never get to experience it again for the first time. And like, mm -hmm. I, I know you guys may not have seen this as significant in your gaming backlog history or whatever of logs of, logs of video games, but this, this definitely hit me. Cause like I, uh, there's memories of me beating video games where I feel like this. And I think the last time I really felt like kind of sad and empty. <laughs> <laughs> was like uh, like i don't know maybe like uh, uh gris was a really good one for me where it just like yeah. hit me and like uh a beginner's guide even and like uh and like i don't know it's really stupid but legend of zelda or Karina of time still it's like it hit me like a ton of breaks at the end and hmm. just i don't know i don't know i was listening to rick glassman discuss this oh, and okay. he he's he's a comedian that's he was diagnosed autistic at like 35 or something. Yeah. And he, uh, there's a lot of, not that I'm autistic, but there's like, you know, people say, oh, I'm probably autistic in this way. It, it, the, the way he described a second watch through of a movie, I really resonated with, which is um, on your next watch through, you, there's not pressure to figure it out. Yeah. There's just familiarity and it's like a warm 
easygoing, happy experience. Yeah. I'm not looking to learn a new thing from it or like experience a new thing. It's just easy. Yeah. And it just works for me. And so I think that I don't really have that with games. I mean, I know I'm holding off on Alex, but post beating a game, I can't think of a sadness that I really felt because I'm looking forward to the next time I play it. <laughs> I, I love the second playthrough even more cozy. sometimes. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. 100%. Yeah. I can I can I can understand that too. Uh I just I, you know, you just experience something and you had a moment for the first time and then you never get to have that same moment again. Yeah. I think that's where my sadness comes in with this. Yeah. Huh. Well, I now you've changed way. me, and now the next game I beat, I'm, I'm gonna so ball my eyes out. <laughs> I just get Hopefully, it's the next game we play. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna hear yes. you wax poetic about it. I actually was thinking, like, oh, I don't have that much to add to this week. I'm not that excited to talk about it. But then I was like, oh, we get to figure out which which game we're gonna play next. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> but uh, what were you gonna say, CK? Um, I was I, for me like games that kind of leave me feeling empty. If a game is well um, written. And it has, like, I'm such a sucker for romance and video games. Yeah, same. So, like, Dragon Age Inquisition, whenever, like, like, I've played it three times now, I think, but nothing will hit me like it did the first time I played the game, because I romanced Blackwall, and then you get Blackwall's whole story, and then you figure out what to do with him. It's totally up to you how you handle it. And, like, by the end, I was just like gonna marry a renegade it's gonna be great <laughs> it's gonna um, be amazing yeah and it's like every time i played it after that i just didn't have that same like uh like i felt i felt very like sad at the end especially after the um trespass or uh trespasser dlc yeah. Yeah. where you get the whole gang back together and you see everyone again you're just like oh my god it's like the citadel dlc for uh yeah. mass effect you know like after you finish that, you're just like, it's just like there's this hole inside of you where you're like, yeah. oh no, I'm never going to feel that for the first time again. That, that excitement of getting the whole gang back together. <laughs> and I, I do like on my second playthrough, I'm excited to play stuff a second time. If I really like something, I'll play yeah. it again immediately. Like I played Resident Evil 4 remake right away. Actually, most of the modern Resident Evils I played again right after. I did it with Final Fantasy 7 remake. But like, I just, I skip through everything. <laughs> I blow through it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> so like i enjoy play i i if I, I think like something that'll make me love a game the first time i play it is the writing the characters um the, the story and then a second playthrough usually is warranted if i've also enjoyed the gameplay i think yeah because then i'm i'm not as invested in the dialogue and i'm just like boop, 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 which i would never do on a first playthrough <laughs> you know what's funny hmm. the games that i replay the most are story games i still never skip the cutscenes like dragon really? age never skip the cutscenes i would Ugh. never fucking do it yeah <laughs> yeah Ugh. yeah i've been replaying red dead and i haven't skipped anything and that intro is fucking long <laughs> it's yes so it long, is but it's so good it's oh good. it's good you get sadie yeah. right away and like I was the like, people oh. that are like oh stop turning video games into movies i'm like shut the fuck, shut up. The fuck up i don't care <laughs> take my video games uncharted is one of the best games ever <laughs> <laughs> uh okay let's pull up the spin are we ready any final thoughts i think so yeah i, I don't i don't think i have anything no. I, I, I did I, recommend I it, it it's on game pass to so try it out if you've got game pass try it on game you pass anything. you can't yeah. mod it though so you just can't prepare for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to mod it buy it on uh buy it on on the steam give gabe in your money mm -hmm. okay we have tome we have Turn Up Boy Commits Tax Evasion, Planet of Lana, Elder Scrolls Red Guard, Wolfenstein New Order, and Sumnerville. That sound good? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Ports, do you want to do the sound effects again? Oh, yeah. Let me <laughs> open the stream here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ready? Yep. Okay. Bloop.
Okay, well, uh, I guess play along, guys, and uh, don't forget to pick it up off the Game Pass or on Steam for six or seven schmackaroonies. And uh, I guess we'll see you all next next time. So, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.